Classifying matter means to sort or to organize matter into similar groups based on similar properties that they all have. An example of this that is common for people to understand would be how we classify animals. We typically will break down animals into smaller categories to understand how they all fit together and how different animals are related to one another. An example of this would be we break down animals for the most part into invertebrates or vertebrates. And then we can break down invertebrates even further, whether it's breaking them into mollusks or arthropods, and then arthropods we can break into different types of insects, crustaceans, or arachnids. Vertebrates, then, on the other hand, we can break down into the common groups of either mammals, reptiles, fish, amphibians, and birds. So these are all different types of animals that have similar, similar characteristics that we will classify them together to get a better understanding of how they can all relate. Matter can go through that same process. Now before we look at how we classify matter, we just first want to make sure we understand that matter is anything that takes up space and has mass. So examples of that could be a desk, takes up space, has mass. Fish, as well as hot air balloon. And also to think about the air inside that hot air balloon also has mass and takes up space. If you think about this, hot air balloon is able to be inflated because of the air that's inside of it. So air does take up space and it also does have mass. Now, along with that, things to think about are what are the things that maybe aren't matter or do not take up space and do not have mass. So these would be things such as sound, an idea, time, or light bulb. So even though a light bulb uh, is matter, the light that it produces wouldn't be matter. Or such as time. A clock is matter, but the time that it keeps itself isn't matter. Uh, an idea or sound. All examples of different types of things, but not that of matter. So, how do we classify matter? There's two main ways that you can classify matter. One is based on its physical state. So that would be examples of solid, liquid, and gas. That's for a different focus. With this video, we want to look at not necessarily the states of matter, but more the physical properties of the matter, as well as the uh, particles that are, are within the different types of matter. So that's how we're going to really focus on this classification of matter. So we can break down matter into two main types uh, and we're going to make a, a web of how matter can be broken down similar to the animal, uh, the way that we break down animals. The first is we, we're going to organize matter um, by the type of particles within that substance. So one way we can break down matter into what we call a pure substance. This would be when matter contains only one kind of particle. An example of that, and something you might draw as well, would be this, where while there are more than one uh, different types of atoms here, each particle that we see here is exactly like the other. So there's only one type of particle, meaning that this is a pure substance. There's only one type of substance that within this uh, type of matter. The other thing would be a mixture. A mixture would be a combination of different substances not bonded together. So we can see here we have uh, both the red particles as well as the white particles. Those two things are different things and they're not bonded together. They're not joined together. Uh, and so that would be a mixture that we see here. Now, if we take a look at the left side of this web, so under pure substances, we can then break pure substances down into two main types of things. The first one is going to be an element. An element is something that contains only one type of an atom, and we can't break elements down any further. They are the basic uh, building blocks of everything around us. If we take a look at the particle diagrams that we see here of an element, 
we see that the elements, even though there might be two things combined, uh, they themselves, are, there's only one type of atom. So an example of this might be uh, O2, where O2 is two oxygens bonded together, uh, similar to what we see here. Other examples would be such as aluminum. Basically anything we can find on the periodic table would be an element. If you can find it on the periodic table, that's what it is. The other thing underneath a pure substance would be a compound. And a compound is when we contain two or more different types of atoms that are now chemically bonded together. Uh, examples of that would be H2O, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide. All these would be examples of different compounds. Uh, if we look at the particle diagrams here now, we see that there's a red and a white. Right? They're two, those two colors represent two different types of atoms, and they're connected, so they are bonded together. Same thing here with the red and the blue. They are bonded together, and they're also two different types of atoms. Now, on the other side of the web, we're going to break down mixtures into a little bit more specifics. So again, a mixture is a combination of different substances not bonded together. And we can break down mixtures into how we can visually see these types of mixtures. One of them is called, see, one type of mixture is called a homogeneous mixture. This is when you see uh, a mixture that is the same throughout. So an example of that would be milk. Uh, if you look here, we have a mixture of different types of particles, but it, for the most part, throughout the entire mixture, it's the same. It's not, there's not different chunks in there. Uh, other examples of homogeneous mixtures would be a uh, tomato soup, things that no matter what size of sample, the substance that you would get out of that sample would be exactly the same. The other type of mixture is a heterogeneous mixture. This is when there's visually different um, particles throughout the mixture. So if you look at this uh, mixture of M&Ms, you can pick out the oranges or the pinks, or the purples or the blues, um, and so you can see the differences within the mixture. Uh, looking at the particles we see here where maybe this is a two different layers within this mixture, so similar to like an oil and water where they might separate, uh, we can see that by the particles, so we can see that there's a heterogeneous mixture. A heterogeneous mixture is maybe when you get a sample of the mixture, you're not always going to have the same types of materials in that each sample. Um, so if you take like a, a spoonful out of a heterogeneous mixture, each spoonful will be a little bit different. Uh, a soup reference for a heterogeneous mixture would also be uh, chicken noodle soup. So. That's how we break down matter, uh, again, basically based on the types of particles that we find and how those particles uh, compare to the other things within them. So matter, again, if we break it down into a mixture, is then broken down further, whether it is homogeneous or heterogeneous. If we go more of a pure substance route, then we can break that into an element or compound. So this is an image of what we would see for that entire uh, web of how we would classify matter.